Hi everybody, I just got done watching Mike Harrison's recently uploaded video in which he tore down an implantable defibrillator and I figured I would make a teardown video of a pacemaker that I happen to have. Now I, I work at a university in the electrical engineering department and very often I get a lot of leftover parts from uh, senior projects that the students work on and then they leave things behind. So. Here's all this stuff, all these really nice circuit boards that I'll probably never get used again. But um, the thing, of course, of interest right now is this thing. They've, they, uh, I guess uh, somebody donated it to them. They've already took a Dremel to it to open it up, so that'll save me the trouble. Basically, the focus of their project was to have an at-home pacemaker monitor, uh, something that would communicate over the over the internet over email or something and then it would email the doctor and uh, and the doctor would have would have status of the pacemaker um, while the patient is comfortably at home just hook up the uh, the sensor and transmitter doohickey thingamabob I don't think they ever actually built one but apparently one way to communicate with pacemakers is to um, I'll just read this. Pacemaker monitoring has already happened for the past several decades. A popular method in, in use today is the pacemaker and heart monitoring and data transmitting device. Um, this particular technology requires the use of two telephones, one used by the physician at their office and one for the pacemaker at his or her home. The physician would have the patient hold the phone handset up to the pacemaker and it would send the signal to the pacemaker via the phone. The pacemaker would then send a signal back through the phone to the physician's monitoring device. And the entire procedure is very inexpensive and it takes a short time to complete the process. So this one, you can see the, uh, the date code here, 23rd week of 1984. So I'm not sure if this actually had any communication um, possibilities because the technology in here is much s simpler than the than the defibrillator that Mike took apart but basically I mean it really only just has one one single connection going out to the heart to uh, just, just one single wire to create the pulse for the heart and that's basically what it looks like we got a lithium battery supposedly lithium and some some nice top quality ICs there and a bunch of capacitors and um, this is all on a ceramic board I guess it's just double-sided that's I already measured that that's a one millihenry inductor we got a uh, quartz crystal and this little orange thing here that is a transient voltage suppressor I don't know if you can see the the symbol on it right there, but that's that's what it is. And um, and the students already cut some wires here. This one just went to the battery. Um, this one is ground. This one is the the output to the outside of the case. And what's really interesting here is that there is a very very tiny reed switch. So apparently the doctor would, or, or the patient, somebody would hold a magnet or an electromagnet up to the chest and close the circuit in that reed switch. Don't know what it would do. Maybe if you give it a magnetic pulse in a certain sequence, then it'll either increase or decrease the, um, the rate at which it sends a pulse to the heart. Okay, I'm going to hook up that reed switch to the continuity buzzer. We got a nice hard drive magnet here. Doesn't need to be too close. Of course, it's a really strong magnet. Just a few other things here. I uh, 
measured these these blue things on the LCR meter. Their capacitor is 10 microfarad, 70 microfarad, and 100 microfarad. And um, and also maybe you can just about see the trace. Those uh, black carbon composite traces on the board, and you can see how they're laser etched. Here's a closer look at the other side of the board. So I'm going to use a hefty soldering iron now to try to take these, these uh, square covers off of the ICs and see what's underneath them. And here's that soldering iron. It's, uh, it's an old school Unger. Uh, 45 watt soldering iron, it gets really hot, so hot that the flux doesn't really stay liquefied, it just burns off, it completely burns off in a matter of seconds. So I always got to solder things really quick with this thing. Sometimes I even have to put it on a variac just to lower the voltage and to reduce the temperature. Well, these chips are not popping open. All it seems like all I can do is remove it from the board and uh, expose some more carbon trace resistors on the bottom. This whole board's so hot, everything's falling off. Actually, I spoke too soon. It looks like Looks like this one actually, the square cover actually started to slide off a little bit, so just a little more effort. There we go. Now I got it. Let me do the other one real quick. Well, I couldn't get that off with the soldering iron, but on this one, looks pretty good and you can see it got so hot that when I placed it on the table earlier it left a burn mark in the wood. I guess I can always dremel the bastard. There we go. Let's see, where's the other one? Hmm. Look at that. It's in a smaller package, but the die is actually much bigger in the in this one. Okay, so here's a look at the the smaller chip with the larger die. I don't see anything too striking about the uh, the features on the chip. Let me zoom in here. All 
I'm not going to pretend to know what any, any of these things are. Of course, there's a whole bunch of transistors and a whole bunch of wire traces all over the place, but I couldn't tell you anything more than that. All right, now here's the other one, the larger chip. Let me zoom in here. Looks like a lot more empty space on this one. It's not quite as crowded. Yeah, the features on this one are certainly larger. Well, there's some numbers, 80-7. I wonder if that means that it's, uh, it was made in 1980, perhaps. The, uh, the pacemaker was dated in 1984. Oh, yeah, let's, uh, Let's look at this little thing down here. Well, that's definitely some kind of transistor. It looks like a BJT. Well, there you go. That's a look at what's inside a 29-year-old pacemaker. I uh, really don't know what I'm going to do with these things, except maybe that reed switch. I'll definitely keep that reed switch. That's probably the smallest reed switch I've ever seen. But everything else is just junk. Thanks for watching. See you next time.